It's taken me a while to start writing this, mainly because I didn't really know where to begin. But I think I figured it out. What I'm about to tell you happened about a year ago. I live rurally. I don't want to say where I exactly live of course, but but I live locally to the narrow gauge scholarly railway. I'm a bit of a nerd on railways. I look into them a lot, the locomotives that run them, as well as all the railways that closed long ago. Oh, and, and also, I love exploring, particularly abandoned places. I know people often say they're scary and sometimes they might be haunted. Well, that is kind of true and I know that after this particular incident, but I still believe that's not often the case. I find abandoned places, well, kind of beautiful to be honest. They're basically bits of history left behind, acting as windows to a time long ago, when certain things were different. Yeah, I, I know that sounds weird, but, but it's how I like to think about it. I like to explore all sorts of places, castles, houses, factories, and I always like doing it alone. That might sound very strange, but, but, but I just prefer it that way. You're not bothering anyone, and there's no one to bother you. It's just, well, me. Not that I don't have any friends, I, I have a few, and I do hang out with them from time to time, but, but sometimes I just like spending time to myself. Now, you're probably wondering, what has any of this got to do with anything? Well, that's where my story begins. About a year ago, I was browsing through the internet, looking for any abandoned railway related places on Sodor. Because as much as I love learning about old railways, there aren't any local ones I can easily reach. Well, besides the ruins of the old Midsodo Railway, which I've been to a couple of times. I looked up abandoned railways on Sodo and nothing interesting showed. So I typed in abandoned train stations on Sodor, because I thought there must be one of those around here. As soon as I pressed enter, the first link on the list caught my attention. It went to a website detailing the history of an abandoned town called Great Waterton. I wondered how I never knew about this until now, but, but that didn't matter. According to the site, the town was one of the first on Sodor, and got its name based on the old waterworks in the area. The line it served was part of the Sodor and Mainland Railway, an old standard gauge line, run by these weird little box engines. No idea why they were designed like that. Anyway, apparently, the town was abandoned on October 12th of 1901, after the springs needed it dried up, leading to the waterworks closing. Though, I'm not sure that was the only reason. I'll explain later. The line to this place has been ripped up, but the station and, well, the whole town is still there. Furthermore, the location of this place was not far from where I live, next to a large forest, north of the Scarlery Railway which only made it more crazy that I never knew of this. I remember being so excited, I got more than what I was looking for, and I couldn't wait to explore this place. I did so, a few days later on a Saturday. My parents had gone away to spend some time with some friends, and wouldn't be back for at least a few days, making this all the more easy. I wouldn't have to spend forever assuring them I would be fine, and, of course, I was alone. It would take about an hour to get there, but I didn't really care. Since it was spring, it wasn't too cold, but there was a slight chill, so I made sure to have a jacket on and bought a bag with various essentials, like water, snacks and a camera. Oh, uh, did I mention I'm into photography? I, I always bring my camera on these trips, mainly to capture these places, but you never know what you might unintentionally catch. I left the house in the afternoon, and went in the direction the forest was in. I'll skip over the journey since nothing interesting happened, just, well, lots of walking, until I eventually found the large forest. I admit, I 
I felt a little intimidated. There were no pathways leading into it, and no one like cyclists or dog walkers were around. I don't think people go into this forest, or at least as part of it. Once I entered, watching for anything that could trip me up, I found there was no sunlight above, due to the massive trees and their branches. I didn't really mind, it did look very beautiful, and I began taking some pictures. Wide, close-ups, the usual. I won't bore you with that stuff. I think I spent about 10 minutes just wandering in the forest, looking for anything that would maybe lead the way to Great Waterton. For a while, nothing. Then, I came across something that seemed very out of place. It looked like a massive pathway, directly in front of me. I wasn't sure what it really was, until I noticed something else, near the edges of the path. Stones, scattered around, going in both directions. Then it hit me. This was ballast. This was where the old railway line was. The one that was ripped up. I looked to my right, where the path seemed to be heading out of the forest. Towards the main line, I assumed. I then looked to the left, where it went deeper in. It was obvious which direction to go in. I can't really remember how long I walked down that path. It honestly felt never-ending. Parts of the pathway were consumed by trees and thick bushes. Eventually, however, the pathway began to widen. Meaning I must have walked over where a set of points were, and there would have been more than one line of track. I then looked directly in front of me, to see something behind a set of trees. The roof of a building. Actually, I, I could see several roofs. I quickly ran forward, only to fall directly into a wall of bushes. I wasn't hurt, but there were bits of leaves all over my face. I brushed them all off, and walked slowly through the bushes, pushing any branches aside. Once I came out the other side, I was there. It was more than I was expecting. I honestly didn't believe there would be this much left. I thought there would just be a handful of old buildings left and nothing more. But they were everywhere. It felt like a fantasy. The first thing that caught my attention was the station. No surprise there. The building itself was almost entirely green with moss on the walls and roof. In fact, all the buildings in the town had that exact appearance. There were only two platforms, covered in bushes and weeds. Interestingly though, the track that led into the station still remained. Obviously it didn't go anywhere anymore, but you would think if they were going to rip up the whole track leading here, they would do it all. Then again, the fact that this whole town hasn't been knocked down is a mystery in itself. I had a quick look inside the station. There wasn't much in there though. All the furniture was dusty, and I could see a couple of pictures still hanging on the walls. Some showed what I assumed were former station staff, while others were of those box engines. I took a few photos and stepped outside. It was now time to check out the town. I was honestly a little worried I would get lost. It felt like a maze wandering around, and most of the buildings looked the same. All the windows and doors were boarded up, meaning I wouldn't be able to look inside any of them. Still, I found it all amazing, taking photos of all the structures. Most of them were just ordinary houses, but some appeared to have specific purposes. One looked like a sweet shop, Despite all the moss, I could just make out the bright red and white colours that would naturally attract anyone's attention. There was also a garage and, and a massive water wheel that was both rotten and rusty. You could wonder for hours about what sort of history this place had, what it was like to live here, a little town surrounded by nothing but pure nature. I still wonder that, although I wish I could say it was just because I was curious, and not out of pure confusion, and fear. As I began to backtrack towards the station, 
I began to hear something strange. It sounded like a high-pitched squeal, but it definitely wasn't an animal. I immediately recognised it as a steam whistle. I wasn't concerned straight away. I at first assumed it was a whistle from one of the engines on the main line. But as I listened more closely, I realised it was too nearby to be from the main line. In fact, it sounded like it was directly outside the town. It was then I began to grow nervous. I decided to continue towards the station and maybe call it a day. The moment I took the first few steps, I could hear footsteps from behind. I instantly spun around, and there, standing a few meters from me, was a man, in a black suit, with a top hat, and a cane in his right hand. He looked like he belonged in a completely different time period. Now, I was starting to panic, at least on the inside. I still tried to breathe normally, as this strange person stared back at me. He seemed to be giving me a look of disapproval, as if I did something wrong. I was about to respond with a hello, but he spoke first. <sighs> it was foolish of you to come here, he spoke, in a gruff and almost sad tone. This once beautiful sanctuary is now cursed. The mechanical beast that roams here has consumed all of us. And he will consume you. Before I could say anything in response to that bizarre statement, I began to see movement in the corner of my eyes. Me and that man were not alone. There were other people now. Men, women and children, all giving me the same look as the man in the suit, as if I had walked into an obvious trap, and they weren't happy that I fell for it. Now, I was really panicking. I was struggling to breathe and, and felt like I was going to faint. I, I had enough. I turned and hurried to the station. Once I was on the platform, I went towards the bushes that led into the forest, but then, I, I did something stupid, I, I decided to look back to see if I was being followed, I wish now I had just kept running, there were no people there, but there was something else, there was an engine, a rusty, filthy and, and devilish engine, just beyond the platform. I could tell it was a box tank. It, it stared at me, with eyes that, that I could swear were red. It, it began to move. It began to move towards me. Its puffing was deep and, and echoey. I ran as fast as what was possible. I shoved my way through the bushes, and once I was on the other side, I continued running, and never thought about stopping. I kept hearing the engine behind me, the deafening puffing and that, that horrifying whistle. Eventually, however, those sounds began to fade, but I still kept running. I didn't stop until I could no longer hear the engine, not only until the only thing I could hear was the gentle breeze of the trees. When I did stop, I collapsed to the ground, trying to catch my breath. I was in a heavy sweat, and couldn't think straight. Was I safe? Was I still being chased? As I lay there, I listened closely to try and hear anything other than my heavy breathing. But I couldn't hear any puffing, or any whistle. Everything was quiet. I finally stood up. Still shaken, but relieved. I had escaped. I survived. But now, I found myself in another problem. How far had I run? Did I go past where I first found the pathway? I couldn't really tell. All I knew was that the direction to the entrance I went through was somewhere to my right. 
All I could do was go in that direction and hope I can find my way home and far away from this nightmare. Now, since I'm writing all of this from my home on my computer, you've probably already guessed that I did get home eventually. Turns out I hadn't run that far. Once I exited the forest, I walked alongside it until I came across where I had entered and I was able to backtrack from there to my house. I can't think of any words to explain how overjoyed I was when I reached the comfort of my home. I could now rest easy, knowing I was far away from any danger. Naturally though, I had several questions for what I discovered at Great Waterton, but no answers for any of them. All those people I saw, what that man said, how that engine was there, or how he could even move. And of course the obvious mystery, of why the town was never knocked down if it hasn't been used for years. Later that night, I decided to investigate on the internet, in the hopes of finding anything that might explain what I saw and heard. As my computer loaded up, I decided to look at the pictures on my camera. Most of them came out well, although a couple were a little overexposed. I am still learning, but there was also something else about some of them. In the backgrounds, I swear I could see people in the bushes or peeking around corners of the buildings. They were looking directly at the camera. They they were looking at me. I was being watched the whole time. I don't really know what to say about that, to be honest. Well, back to the internet, and while I did find some stuff, it only added to the confusion. I first looked back at the website I saw a few days ago. Besides what I already read, there wasn't much I missed. Besides the year the line to the town was ripped up. March 12th, 1902, a year after the Sodor and Mainland Railway went bankrupt and its three box tanks were scrapped. It was also six months after the town was abandoned. There was no mention of ghosts or hauntings or anything like that at all. I thought for a moment. Then, in the search box, I typed Great Waterton Ghost. While I did see results regarding ghost stories, none were about Great Waterton. It didn't make any sense. Surely I couldn't have been the only one to explore the town and encounter ghost? However, I did find something while I was browsing. It was a link to a set of images, showing a report from the Sodor and Mainland Company about a group of missing people. It detailed who they were and what their jobs were and so on. But the main thing that caught my attention was where they were last seen. Great Waterton. And the date? October 10th, 1901. Just two days before the town was declared abandoned. Oh, I forgot to mention, along with the report were pictures of the missing people. And, well, one of those people was a man in a suit, wearing a top hat, and holding a cane. I have been keeping track of everything I have discovered and have been trying to put it all together to make some sort of conclusion. Here's what I've got. Great Waterton was served by the Sodor and Mainland Railway. The Sodor and Mainland Railway went bankrupt in 1901, and all its engines were scrapped. Later that year, a group of people went missing, and shortly afterwards, the town itself was abandoned. One of those missing people was one of the same people I saw. That man, I guess, was warning me of the thing that most likely led to his disappearance. That thing in question was the engine that chased me, and based on its design, it's safe to say it was the Sodor and Mainland engine. This engine haunts Great Waterton, 
which was probably the main reason everyone left it and it had nothing to do with the springs drying up. Therefore, it is possible that the Sodoin Mainland Railway wanted to cover up the real reason and rip up the line leading to the town to prevent anyone getting hurt. Or possibly something worse. Now, I'm no detective and some of those points are more or less speculation, so make of it what you will. I wish I had more answers to this whole thing, but that's all I've got. Great Waterton, a place that is seen as just an abandoned town, hidden away in a forest. I now know there was more to that. It was once a home to many, a gathering place for friends and family, a sanctuary, and all of that was lost in an instant. I never did tell my parents about that eventful day. I don't think they'd be too happy that I possibly nearly got myself killed just because I wanted to see some abandoned town. I still have a passion for exploring, however I have reconsidered my way of doing it alone. I still prefer that way and I do still explore alone sometimes, but when it comes to places that seem dangerous, then I will call a friend or two to join me. Better to play it safe in those situations. I realise the idea of me still exploring may be a little weird. Why would you continue doing something that nearly killed you? Well, besides what I said at the beginning, I suppose for me at least, it really comes down to curiosity and a desire to see parts of our history, as opposed to just reading about it. If there's one thing this incident has made me realise, is that there can often be more to something than you first assume. There is always history, stories and people that have never been documented. There is so much out there that is hidden away. That just really interests me. That's why I do what I do. And I have no intentions of stopping anytime soon.